Hello students, today we're going to start a new exercise in F3 Chapter 4 Integration. We're going to do exercise 4C and we'll look at questions 3A and 3D. But before that, I'd like to go through briefly what you need for today, the substitution technique for integration. Now recall from previously in P4, you have learned the technique of substitution to make integration possible. Let me quickly go through what we should know for today's work. So typically, before you start a question, you should choose a substitution. In some cases, you're lucky, they will provide you with the appropriate substitution to use. So normally you would do x equals to a particular substitution in terms of theta. It can be other variables and we can adjust accordingly. So the first thing you do is to differentiate what you choose to substitute. So dx, d theta. In this case, it will become, let's just use the notation, f prime theta. Okay, so our questions usually will be integrate something, dx. Then they will tell you to use a substitution to do it. So you will have to choose another variable, theta, to do that. So when you have set your x equals to f theta, you can substitute it into here, right? Whatever the question is. Now the next thing is a little bit tricky. This part about dx, I always say it's illegal, but we can do it this way. D, just to write it out, d theta goes to the back, so dx, becomes f prime d theta like this. This is illegal to write out, but you can think in this way. So when we substitute x into the question and dx with this, you will get something, the x in x times, sorry, in theta after you sub in your x, times f prime theta d theta. So the next step would be to simplify everything before you do any integration. And take note that after you simplify, everything should be in terms of theta. So you get something else, d theta. Everything here should be in theta. Then you should integrate, and when you integrate with respect to theta, your answer will be in theta. Your answer, and remember the integrating constant. Then finally, from your very first step, you should be able to figure out what theta is in terms of x, and you substitute it back to give your final answer. Okay, that's basically how substitution works. Let us go to question 3a. <coughs> question 3a says, use suitable substitution to find. So the question is this. three over square root of four minus x squared. This is somewhat of the form one over a square minus x square. Sorry, one over square root a square, right? So now you have to think what substitution to use. Your aim of using substitution is always to be able to simplify it to a form. At this step, it should be a very straightforward integration. So you need to think what you want to let x to be so that after a few steps of simplification, you can get maybe something like a trigger, a plain trigger. I would try sine. So I will start my question, let x, right? And I'll try sine theta. However, there's a four. So I would think I will need something to balance with the 4, maybe I put 2, dx d theta is 2 cos theta, that's what we have gone to. 
Okay, now we finally start the question. Okay, I will substitute in my x. Um, 4 sine square theta, correct? Then I substitute my dx, which is 2 cos theta d theta. Okay, after that is simplification. So um, 2 and 3 together make 6. Okay, inside the square root, I'll take out 4, 1 minus sine squared. Here, the cosine is still there. All right. So, make that 6, and then I take out the square root 4. Becomes a 2. 1 minus sine squared is cos, cos squared. Right, six over two is three. Square root of cos square is cos square. It will cancel out with cos square on top, so it leaves us with one. After that, we can integrate. We integrate one is theta. So we have a plus d. Now we need to substitute back our theta something plus c. Let's go back to the very top. Now if x is equals to 2 sine theta, then theta will be up sine x over 2. Okay, I'll put that in. And we're done. This is the full solution. Okay, let us go on to the next question. Question 3D. Integrate 1 over square root of 4x squared plus 25 dx. Of course, first you have to decide what to let and then you differentiate it. Let me choose a different variable. Okay. Um, you can have a little bit of hint from your formula sheet. Now let's look at this arc shine. Now the the whole integral you're asked to do looks a little bit like with some adjustments to the coefficient. So I will look at this and try to use up shine. Okay, so I will do um, 5 over 2. So if I differentiate this, we get 5 over 2 cos u. Um, we can prepare this first or do it later. This is what I mean by upshine. Okay. 
So the integral, 1 over square root of 4x squared plus 225dx. Let us substitute for 5 over 2 shine u whole thing squared plus 25. And then we need to substitute the dx will be 5 over 2 cosh u du. Okay, now we simplify. Okay, square 5 over 2, you get 25 over 4. Multiply by 4, you get 25. Shine square u plus 25. You can take out 25. Okay. And then you use the identity to change this to cosh. This part change to cosh. Cosh square. And then I will take the square root of 25 to give us 5. I copy back this stuff. Okay, so so five and five over two, we end up with half cos square square root is cos multiplied by cos on top will give us one again. Okay, so we have half u plus z and u is shine. So that's it. Take some time to look at it. In the intermediate steps, if you need more explanation, please feel free to let me know.